Glory to God. Lift your hands to heaven and get another drink. Drink. Fill us, fill us, and kill us. Towards no longer we that live, but you that live. <laughs> yes. Yes. We want more of you, Papa. We want more of you and less of us. How is everybody this evening? Blessed and highly favored. Well, I just skied in from up north. <laughs> Came from minus 17 degrees. Talk about snap. Everywhere we walked, it snapped. <laughs> yes. Thank God. I was, it was fun, but because I knew I can come home. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory. Yes. Okay. Uh, Acts 17, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday night training. Word a word alive is worth a drive. <laughs> that was a poet and didn't even know it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is our strength, and in his presence is fullness of joy. Not miserable. Amen. My goodness, if you're miserable, go in the closet, lock the door, don't tell nobody you're a Christian. Amen. Wait for Jesus to show up. I don't care if it takes 10 days. Amen. By the time you get out of there, you're going to be joyful. Amen. Why? Because you're going to be grateful to get out of there, number one. <laughs> but you'll be, you'll be filled with the joy of the Lord. You know, so many times, uh, let me share this with you first of all. God is doing a refreshing, you know, he, we, we say he's doing a new thing. He, you know, it's, God is God. There ain't nothing new under him, you know, under the sun. But there's an area where he's increasing. There's an area where he's pouring out. There's an area where he's touching more. There's an area where things are happening because he know, the enemy knows that his time is short and there are more attacks. Amen. And, and, and in this, God is, he's so merciful and graceful. He just says, well, you, come on, step in here and, and touch this. You know, when you go to a water fountain, if you're thirsty, amen, if you're thirsty. Well, in the spirit realm, we got to be thirsty. Amen. Even when, when you're not. Then you say, Lord, get me thirsty. Amen. amen. And when you go to a water fountain, you don't step over the water fountain and hope that water is going to come out. And you don't look at it, and you don't pray, oh, Lord, please listen. God, God has already made the arrangements. There's a button there. There's a step there. Amen? You step on it, and you know what happens? Water comes out. Now it comes out. But there's something you got to do. Open your mouth. Yes. And then what happens? You drink. So for that water to come out, it takes... There's a price to pay, isn't there? There was no thing to put money in. There's, there's no, you're looking for no charge card for the water fountain? Hallelujah. There's a price. It's called cooperation. Amen. Nothing comes without cooperation. People are waiting on God and God's waiting on them. And what's the problem? I've given you everything. Why don't you get it? You know, when you go in the store to groceries, do not jump off the shelf into your basket. Amen. There's something you have to do. You have to take them off and put them in. And then what happens? Supplies come. Now, there's something else that you do. You, first of all, look at the name, what you're buying. Because there's certain things that you know you're going to buy. You just don't go into a grocery store and just start taking things off the shelf and fill them in your basket, do you? No. So there's an area where you are doing something because you are seeing something. So you are actually looking, aren't you? It's the same thing in the spirit. You are looking. 
You are seeking. The, the word says seek and you will what? Find. And one thing we don't need is any counterfeit. Amen? Amen. We want the real McCoy. The devil always brings counterfeit. And I believe God is getting, he's flipping things over. He's turning, things are happening greatly. But there's an area where we've got to be a spiritually positioned. Amen? You've got to be spiritually positioned because the enemy's going to try to get you out of position so you miss God. In Acts chapter 17, in verse 22, it says, Then Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody knows that the word religion means bondage. Well, let me tell you who promoted religion was Satan's kingdom. Jesus promoted freedom. He didn't come and say, behold, the religion is upon you. He said, behold, the kingdom is upon you. And he said, verse 23, would you read it with me? For as I was passing through the con and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I'm going to proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it since he is Lord of heaven and earth does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their what? Pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they might, so that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might what? Grow for him and what? Find him though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being as also some of your own prophets have said that we are also his offsprings. Now I want you to understand something that God sets boundaries. Amen. He sets boundaries for me and you. The Holy Spirit sets boundaries. The law was actually a boundary establisher in the old covenant. And then in the new covenant, the Holy Spirit is the one that sets the boundaries now. So in these boundaries, they're for our protection so we don't go over them. Amen? And let me tell you that you're earning the expansion of the boundaries in your life with God. Every one of us is earning. As you are faithful with a little, he gives you more. He begins to expand our boundaries, doesn't he? And in expanding our boundaries, it's because he can trust us. Amen? Amen? Now, in the area of boundaries, what the enemy likes to do, when you begin to step over boundaries in, in, in these areas of boundaries, what the enemy likes to do is bring a counterfeit boundary, and it's called limitations. He tries to bring us into a place of limitation. So let me share with you that sin puts limitations in our life. Amen? And obedience expands the boundaries in our life. Is everybody with me? So there is an area where God is trying to get us to a place where we're breaking barriers of limitations in our life. And it's important that we begin to understand these things. You know, so many times we can't let go of something. And when you can't let go, you cannot grow. Amen. Is everybody with me? Everyone say, when I don't let go, I don't get to grow. When I let go, I, let go. I have an opportunity to grow. Is everybody with me? And let me tell you, God tests us on these things, doesn't he? Because he's trying to get us to something. He's trying to give us more. He's trying to, he want, he'll never give you more than what you can handle. Amen? And if you can't handle what he's given you, Hello? He begins to tighten up the boundaries. He begins to tighten them up more. Why? Because he loves us. He doesn't do things to punish us. He corrects us. It says he chastens us. And how, why does he chasten us? To tighten our... Right. He loves us. So he tightens our boundaries. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6.
this is so it, it, it's so prophetic that if we grab hold of us, he, this is what he's telling us in this whole thing. Second Corinthians chapter six and verse uh, in verse eleven. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us. Hello. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your what? Own affections, your own desires, your own stuff. And these are things that cause, let me tell you, there are things that we cause limitations in our life. He says this, look at this. He says, now in return for the same, I speak to you as children, not as mature adults. You also be open. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked with what? Unbelievers. In other words, don't behave like an unbeliever. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with what? Belial. For what part has a what? A believer with a what? An unbeliever. And what agreement has the temple of God with? Idols. In other words, idols are going to bring limitations. He's telling us all of these things right here. He's saying, man, these are the things that are going to bring limitations. Limitations are barriers that the enemy builds around us and enslaves us. He puts us in captivity, in bondage, and in a cage. In verse 16, in what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God and they'll be my people if they do this. If they what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you and I'll be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Again, restrictions are limitations. God gives us warning here of associations of thinking and behaving like unbelievers. Amen. This is the warning that's given here. He's saying, listen, and the associations of thinking and behaving like unbelievers, limitations will be placed upon you by the enemy because you're touching things. Every time we touch something carnal, it builds a limitation. We must continually walk away from self and worldliness. There are three areas of limitations that can hinder. One of the areas of limitations that hinders is things that we inherited. Amen? Things we inherited and traditions that are inherited. They bring limitations because it promotes a belief system that's flawed. The second thing is a self-imposed limitation. And sometimes we bring self-imposed limitations by decisions that we make. Wrong ones. There's this, and everything goes under, well, we'll talk about this in a minute. Self-imposed limitations. Again, there's the area, the third one is associations of influence and atmosphere, what we call environment. And which all of these fall under the law of sowing and reaping, don't they? Everything falls under the law of sowing and reaping no matter what. You don't want to escape that. Nobody escapes that. Amen. Uh, Exodus 20. So when we touch these things, these things seem to grab hold of us. And we have a hard time letting them go. And if we don't let them go, we will not grow. Amen. Exodus 20. Hallelujah. How about habits? Amen. How about habits? People have what? Habits. And not every, it doesn't matter whether it's, uh, it doesn't even have to be a bad habit. Does everybody get it? It can be a habit that sets a limitation on us, isn't it? Amen. 
Well, I always do it this way. Well, change it, homie. See, because certain things and habits and traditions keep people in cycles. You know, every one of us knows when something's getting ready to happen. And you're either going to re, you're going to either respond to that in a, in a new way to break it, or you're going to react to it and stay there. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse one, ver, Exodus twenty, verse one. And God spoke all these words. What did He say? I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of what? Bondage. Out of the house of bondage. How many of y'all know addiction is bondage? Amen. How many of y'all lust is bondage? Amen. Amen. How many of y'all know dead is bondage? Amen. I mean, we can go on until tomorrow, you know. <laughs> Verse 3. You shall have no other gods before you. How, how many of you know that will bring bondage? Amen. You shall not make yourself a carven image. Any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the sea. You shall not bow down to it nor serve them. For I am the Lord your God and am a jealous God visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. He says they hate me. Why? Because they worship everything else. People scream and yell at a football game, basketball game and everything that blows air into a pigskin. But they go to service. <laughs> they go out the door. Hey, man, what's going on? What are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Not even to praise God. You got to kick him in the butt to get a hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 7, it says, You shall not what? Take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, and that you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in the six days the Lord God made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now we know that we're not under the law anymore. Amen. We don't worship the Sabbath. We worship the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. In fact, the word Sabbath means rest. So if you're really walking with the Lord, you're resting all the time. Amen. And you will not go to hell if you don't go to church on Saturday, okay? It's called religion. That's all God wants you to be is his son and daughter. Amen. Bottom line. Son and daughter. That's all he wants. After that, everything else is a blessing and an add to it. In verse 12, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or anything else that is at your neighbor's. So these are things that he gives us that says, if you don't, if you do any of these things, you're going to set a limitation. Why? Because you're touching something that's unclean, and it gives the devil right away to put a limitation on our life. Ephesians 4. Now, many people say, well, I'm not under the Ten Commandments. Well, the Word says that the law is in us now. In fact, we're more accountable than, than the Ten Commandments. Amen? Amen. But thank God we're, He's got mercy and we can repent. We don't have to go out and find an animal and kill it. Jesus paid the price for everything, didn't He? 
Well, there'll be a way to get rid of a lot of cats in our neighborhood. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 17. Let's read it together. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. And that's where we got to see things through. If we see things through at the end result, we won't do some of the things we do. Say some of the things we say. Sometimes, you know, you know what's wonderful about the phone sometimes? You know who's calling. Amen. <laughs> Click. <laughs> See ya. You know, the enemy always wants to get you in the ring. If the devil can suck you in the ring, you lose the battle. Because the blindness of their heart, verse 19, who be in past feeling. How many know people who live by emotions are the most dangerous people? Having given themselves over the lewdness to work all on cleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you've heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you what? You put off. In other words, you walk away from yourself. Man, when you start sensing you, leave him. Walk away. Hang up. And I hate myself, the old self. When I sense I got to compete with him, I leave him. See ya. Jesus did that. He said, get behind me. Who did he say that to? Peter. Peter didn't have the strength, so Jesus helped him. He said, get behind me, devil. Peter was a little upset, but he was probably thanking him later. Thank you, man. That was really rough. <laughs> I couldn't believe I was thinking those things and saying those things. How stupid I was. It wasn't you, Peter. You were just being influenced. Amen? Amen? That you put off what? Concerning your what? Verse 22. Form our conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt. It sure ain't grown in faith. It's growing corrupt. According to the deceitful lusts. And being renewed in the... But be re what? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That you put on the what? The new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So whose responsibility is to walk away from your old self and put on the new? Ours. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you what? Speak truth. Speak truth. Speak truth. Speak truth. Think truth. Examine yourself, whether you're walking in truth or you're lying to yourself. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and don't get caught. I mean, uh, be angry and don't sin. <laughs> How many of y'all know God knows everything? Amen. amen. Don't get religious on me now, amen. Oh my God, he's heresy in this. Don't get fleshy. Don't let the old man take over now. <laughs> Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your what? Wrath. Wrath nor give place to the devil. Would you read 27 with me again? Nor give place to the devil. Oh, oh, one more time. Nor give place to the... One more time. Nor give place to the devil. Okay, we can go home now. Verse 28. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. And let no corrupt word proceed out of you. Why? Do you understand that these things that Jesus is speaking about through Paul, the letter he's writing, is to share with others in the church. Now remember, he's not writing to unbelievers. He's writing to believers. 
He's saying, look at me, I'm the devil. You're making way to the devil. And he's putting limitations on your life. In fact, he's putting some of you in prison and don't even realize it. Amen. You can't advance, you can't grow. And everything that God's trying to get you, the devil's stealing. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Hello. Amen. Amen. You want to do the moonwalk like Michael Jackson? Start speaking corrupt words. You'll be going backwards. <laughs> and he ain't with us no more. Hello. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Grieve, Grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness. bitterness. Uh -huh. But, but, but. You don't know. But, but, but. But, but. What are the but, buts with the little mopeds? The rice burners are the Mimi's. Me, 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 me. And the Harleys are the come out, come out, come out. <laughs> so don't go buy a moped, okay? Beep. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> of course, if you're in another country, it's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. And verse 30 again, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. In other words, walk away from your mouth. Amen. Yes, just because you ain't saying nothing, don't text it. Amen. Man, I saw, there's a guy in an airplane. I'm telling you, he had... Nuclear fingers. <laughs> I've never seen two thumbs move so fast in my life. I thought a fire was going to start. He was moving so fast. I'm thinking, wow, this guy must take some... <laughs> I mean, he was writing a whole novel. I'm still trying to go... <laughs> Finally, I get fed up and say, Hello! <laughs> And then I got to watch what I see because if I don't have my glasses on, I can say some perverse things that this thing interprets. <laughs> oh my God, I'm glad I didn't sun dead. <laughs> Verse 32. Verse 31 again. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving, for, uh, <laughs> forgiving. One another, even as God in Christ forgave you, let go so you can grow. But I need, you know, everybody wants to talk about it. Amen. For what? Thank you. It's like going in front of a judge. That's all they're trying to do is plead their case. But man's not the judge. God is. He knows it all. Amen? He knows it all. Make no place for the devil. Why? Because we've created emotional barriers that are walls and ceilings of limitations that encage us. In Galatians chapter 4. There's a time for counsel. Yes. But go to the throne, not the phone first. Amen? Amen. Galatians chapter 4. In verse 1. Everybody okay? Amen. Let's read it. Is everybody there? Now this I say that the error, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. But is under what? Guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. In other words, he, got, he has this in these boundaries, doesn't he? He puts people over us so that things can, so we learn, we're trained. 
And so we're trusted. Even so, when we, uh, even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Verse 4. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son in your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, which means daddy. That's relationship. That's what the Lord is trying to get us to a place of, hi, Dad, good morning. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those things which by nature were not God's. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage. In other words, people go back instead of forward. Again, they go back to the touch agree with the old man. You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Let's go a little further. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not inquired or injured me at all. You know that because of the physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject. But you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Again, the elements of this world, influences that promote. Are you ready? Influences that do what? Promote, protect, and preserve self. That's what the world offers me and you. It promotes, protects, and preserves self. Building limitations that enslave us and deceive us into bondage. That's the enemy's course, his purpose. One of the things we need to do is know what builds these limitations. Amen? Amen? So we can avoid them. Amen. In Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. In verse 1 through 6. Let's speak it together, please. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for what? For obedience to the faith. 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 So we need to be obedient to the faith. Among all nations for his name, among whom you also are called of Christ Jesus. Obedience to the faith. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen? Amen. Faith is also considered as truth. Faith is truth, isn't it? So we are obedience to the truth. Now let me explain something about faith. Faith is a key. And I believe that right now there's an, a, there's an area where God is opening up a whole other arena of the gift of faith. It's different. The gift of faith is different than the area of just a person having faith. It is a, it is a gift that is released. Amen. It's a gift that is what? Released. Amen. He said we're to be obedience to the faith. Or in other words, obedience to the author Jesus, the truth. And this key is what unlocks the other realm for me and you. 
It is a key that unlocks, which makes connection. Is everybody okay? So, this faith sees, walks, talks, and releases power. This faith does what? It sees, it walks, it talks, and it releases power. It is a gift of faith. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now, I'll write this down for a second. F-A-I-T-H. Are you ready? What a, think about what we're doing. We're fighting attacks in the heavenlies. Aren't we? We are fighting attacks in the heavenlies. Faith. If you're not fighting attacks in the heavenlies, you ain't moving in faith, are you? If you're not spiritually warfaring, you're not in faith. You're going to be hitting the other side. That's why there will be first strikers, aren't we? Faith can also represent facing any interference that hinders. Facing any interference that hinders. But I like fighting attacks in the heavenlies. But we are fighting in interferences, aren't we? That hinders. That's faith. Faith moves forward, not backwards. Amen. We must be obedient to the faith. In Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, did we do 2 Corinthians 5 yet? Okay. <laughs> then we're going to move in faith and go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5, 1, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is where? From heaven. Man, we want to be clothed with more. Sometimes frustration. You know, I get, sometimes people are struggling and are really not struggling. Oh, I'm struggling. The enemy's attacking me. No. Usually, there's, it's not the struggle. It's the groan saying, man, I want to be more clothed. And people don't even understand it. They think they're struggling. And then they look to find out what they're struggling with. And they begin to open doors to the enemy. Amen. It must be this. It must be this. It must be this. It must be this. Next thing you know, they're hearing a thousand voices all around them. And they're battling and trying to do all kinds of stuff. And in reality, they're really not struggling. They're groaning. Because they're designed to be more clothed from home. See, there's times when you just don't know that you don't know that you don't know, but you think you're struggling, and you don't even know what the heck you're struggling with. I'm struggling, but I don't know why. God's doing something with me. No, you're just growing for more home. You just want to be more clothed with home. Does everybody get this? And because you want to be, when you recognize that, that's activating faith. Sometimes faith just needs to be recognized. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For in this verse 2, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For if, for we who are in this tent groan being burdened. Hello, did you ever feel a sense of burden when you don't know what the heck's going on? Not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by, not by sight, not physical sight, spiritual sight though. Amen. Therefore, we make it 
Oh, verse 8. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to what? Be well pleasing to him. Why? Well, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Nobody escapes. Amen. This faith unlocking the other side by connecting ourselves in thought, word, and deed. Proverbs 3. There's a new faith arising. You got to step in it though. Faith does not come to you. You meet it. I'm waiting for faith. Well, he's right in front of you. Just go meet it. Proverbs 3, verse 3. Would you read it? Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Verse 5. What's the next one? Trust. Is faith trust? Yes. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Now, here's faith in movement. In all of your ways, what? Acknowledge him. And he will what? He's going to direct your path. If you what? Acknowledge him. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Reverence him. Acknowledge that he is holy. And everything else is unholy. Amen? Amen. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Lean not on your common sense. It just doesn't make sense. Then make faith. Amen. Does everybody get it? It just doesn't make sense. Then make faith. People are living a life of trying to make sense. Don't live a life of making sense. It's not enough anyways. Make faith. Does everybody get it? That's what he wants us to do. Make faith, and then he'll meet you. First hmm. John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. You know, the word says, nothing is impossible to those who believe. So what we want to do then is get into a position, amen, where the power of possibility is always there. We'll talk more about that at another time. Hallelujah. Word says be ready in season and out. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Let's read it. Whoever believes, whoever believes, what's the word believe mean? Follow. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not what? Burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Praise God. Now let me share this with you. There, there, is, a, there is a position that is a saved position and a born again position. It, it revolves around the tabernacle of God. People who are living in the outer court are still in the saved position. People who live in the holy place and the most holy place are in a born again state of being. There's a difference. Does everybody understand that? 
One is salvation, one is priesthood, and one was kingship. And the closer you are to the eternal realm, the safer you are. Amen. The more you're like him. And it's going to take worship to get there. It's going to take obedience to faith. Is everybody okay? Amen. Hallelujah. All right, verse 4 again. Forever is born of God overcomes the world. In other words, the elements, the influence. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our what? Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus, he who believes, he who believes, he who believes. So we see that faith and belief are associated, aren't they? They connect, they walk hand in hand. He who believes that Jesus is the son of God. And this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. Overcome with faith in Him and believe on Him. In other words, we believe, we accept, we receive, and then we execute. You can only execute by faith. And because you believe, you receive it, then you execute it. So if you're believing tonight, if you're mixing what you're hearing tonight with faith, you know what you're going to want to do? Execute it. Because so many things don't get manifested because people are not mixing it with faith. In Romans chapter 10. And what's faith? Fighting attacks in the heavenlies. That's where the fight's at, isn't it? The heavenlies means the unseen realm. You know how many people are saying that they're believers and they're still not fighting spiritually yet? Yeah. And they wonder why the devil comes to steal, kills, and destroys? Don't know how to fight spiritually. <clears throat> Romans chapter 10. But I'm telling you, God is raising up warriors. He's taking those, he's saying those who are weak say you are strong. He's saying, those who say you can't say you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. In verse 5, would you read it? For Moses writes about the righteous which is, is of the law. The man who does these things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks. Hello. How many of y'all know faith speaks, right? But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth, Confession brings possession. The Lord Jesus and believe and follow in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Wow. For the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Faith speaks. It believes. Romans 8. 8.28. Breaking barriers of limitations. It's going to take faith. It's going to take the gift of faith. Activate it. Verse 28, is everybody there? Would you read it with me? And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Can you believe it? Can you receive it? Can you execute it? then we know that all, listen, it's faith that allows everything to work to the good. No matter what it seems like today, 
No matter what people have said today, no matter what it seemed like yesterday, it's got nothing to do with what's waiting for you in faith. Amen. Nothing. Amen. And we know that all things work to, to good for those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose for whom he what? That he foreknew you? Yeah, he did. Who also predestined to be, to be what? Conformed to the image of his son. Amen. Now, if he wants to conform us to the image of his son, was there any battle that Jesus didn't, that any, any battle Jesus lost? Never. Never lost a battle. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us what? All things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of daddy, who also makes intercession for us. Man, do you know God's praying for me and you? He's making intercession for us. I think he answers his own prayers. By faith. It says he's the author and the finisher, right? So he's activating faith. Man, he's praying for my butt. Hello? He's praying for everything. He's interceding for me and you. Now, when he's interceding and the Holy Spirit's interceding, two touch and agree and it comes to pass. Amen. Snap. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we're killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. We're more than conquerors. Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4 and verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel is preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being what? Mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we have, for we who have believed do enter that rest, as he said, so I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. No faith. Again, he designates a certain day saying to David, Today, after such a long time, as it has been said. Look at what he says. Today, if you will what? Hear his voice and do not what? Harden his heart. In other words, hear. You believe, you receive, and you execute it. Amen? Not mixed with faith. Not mixed with faith. In other words, there's not a full trust. 
There's compromise. There's double-mindedness. There's uncertainty. There's doubt. Those things will not mix with God's Word. They don't mix. Amen? Now, faith comes by hearing, doesn't it? But when you truly hear, what do you do? You're receiving. People that listen just go, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. And they didn't get nothing. See, but when you're truly hearing, you're thinking, how can I give this to someone else? How can I share this? How can I teach this? See, when you're hearing, you're already using it. When you're hearing, you're already executing it. Or else you're not hearing. And you're not mixing it with faith. You're just thinking, well, I heard this already. Man, what time are we getting out of here? There's a place I need to be. Listen, there's no drive through No drive through Hallelujah. First Corinthians 2. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Boy, you hear a lot of stuff out there. All these philosophers and intellectuals. and Man, they got some intense words. I can create a few words myself. You can ask my wife that. You can't even find them in the dictionary. And only I know what they mean. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but there's an area where God wants us to come into the area. In verse 5, it says that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Why? If it's in the power of God, then you're moving in faith, aren't you? Because you're waiting for something. Listen, the power of God is not stagnant. It manifests. Amen. When you light a firecracker, you're hoping you don't have a dud. Right? But what happens when you light a firecracker? So by faith, you light it, you know, and wisdom causes you to run <laughs> or throw it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And then you're just waiting. Yes, I know it's going to blow. And boom. Yes. That's a manifestation of faith activated. <laughs> That was a parable. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4. Hey, I'm just being like my dad. Like father, like son, right? <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 16. Let's speak it together. <laughs> Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, hello, for our light affliction, everyone to your neighbor and say, it's only light. Turn to the other one and tell them it's only light. <laughs> 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 
See, don't you feel better already? <laughs> for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Tell them it's only for a moment. You'll burn through it. Now, wait a minute. For our light affliction, which is only for a moment, is working for us. Say it. Tell them it's working for you. Now I ask them, can you believe it? Can you receive it? And can you execute it? <laughs> okay. For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far exceeding, far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. While we don't look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. <coughs> glory. Again, we got to come to a place where we let go and let grow. Amen? Amen? Amen. When, unless you let go, you cannot grow. <coughs> let go and let's grow. Oh, glory. Oh, okay, yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 10. While we're here. Hallelujah. Let grow. Let's go. Let's grow. In faith. We want to increase. Amen. How many of y'all God's an increase in business? Praise God. Verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 14. Would you read it with me? For we are not overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you. For it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things beyond measure, that is in other men's labors, but having hope that as for your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Let me explain something very important to you. Too many times individuals are not taking the atmosphere. And I'm taking, taking the atmosphere by authority. Amen. If you do not take the atmosphere by authority and remove what's there hindering, you will not be able to infiltrate. Does everybody understand that? So there's an area we must take the atmosphere into captivity of Christ by removing in evil influence because the enemy wants to steal your faith. Every time he comes to steal. His purpose is to diminish your faith. His purpose is to drain you. Did you ever get around somebody that talks so much, drains you? We need to just tell them to shut up. Amen. Amen? Man, shut up. I love you, but man, you're killing me. Amen? Take the authority in the atmosphere. That's what, you know how you take authority in the atmosphere? Before you go anywhere, you bind the strong men. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind, blind, mute, and deaf, every foul, unclean, seducing, hindering spirit, principality, power of darkness, wickedness, and every place, and every spirit that's under the authority of Satan, and every strong man, before I enter that place, in Jesus' name. Real simple. Dispatch your angels, remove them, and bring your glory. What's he doing? He's making a place for me and him. Why? So faith can be released. Everybody got that? Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, did you get that? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 1. <sighs> Second Peter chapter 1. Now, there's something that's going to have to happen here now, you know. Because you 
You're going to have to step out of your comfort zone. Victories are not won in a comfort zone. They're won out of the comfort zone. You know why? Because people rely on themselves in the comfort zone. Out of the comfort zone, they can only rely on the Lord. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Let's read it together. Simon Peter, a bond servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith. With us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. How many of y'all know knowledge is also power? Of him. If you know, if you know Mr. Power. Amen. Papa Power. Praise God. Papa power. Verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in a world through lust which builds limitations. But also for this very reason giving all diligence add to your faith. Whoa. Virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, which is also endurance, which is, yes, to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Amen. How many of y'all know love is faith, and faith is love? Amen. Amen. For these things are yours and abound. You will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of God and Lord Jesus Christ. Get out of the comfort zone. And I'm going to close at 1 Timothy chapter 6. Is everybody okay? Amen. It's time to let go so we can grow. Amen? Get out of the comfort zone. Believe, receive, and activate. We are fighting the tax in the heavenlies, aren't we? That's called faith. Amen. We're willing to face any interference that hinders. That's called faith. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Is everybody there? Hmm. Okay. Are you ready? Verse 7. Let's speak it. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. I think some people believe they can actually carry some things out. <laughs> certain religions do, you know what I'm saying? That's why they're called religions. Verse 8. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which draw men into what? Destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man and woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you are also called and have con confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So we're going to fight. We're not going to run. There's no wimps in the kingdom. They're soldiers. Amen? That's why we're here to get trained up. 
trained up, man. It's time to pull out the sword and cut some serpents' heads off. It's time to step out, not in blindness, <clears throat> but make a confession of faith so that the power of God is manifested. Amen? Amen. Let's break these walls of limitations around us. Walk away from yourself. And allow the Lord to build the house. Father, we are honored and blessed. Thank you for your word tonight. And thank you for allowing the, us to even be in the battle. For you have called us. You've chosen us. And you want us to be faithful. Faithful as someone who's walking in faith. So that we may call those things that are not as though they are. And make the unseen seen. So Father, continue to bring spiritual sight, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, increase everyone's faith that they may see the manifestation. Allow them to see, walk, speak, and release faith wherever they are, wherever they go, that you may be glorified in the life that you've given to each and every one of us here tonight. And protect this seed so it grows and bears fruit for your glory with the blood of Christ in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed.